one of the things that I ne ne neglected to talk to you about earlier on was um, some of the strategies regulators are taking to deal with non-point source pollution. Uh, for instance, traditionally all agricultural uh, waste was considered non-point source pollution, but in the, the mid-1990s, we found a tremendous amount of pressure from various groups uh, when, for instance, we had hurricanes in North Carolina that overflowed some of those waste lagoons of the, the hog, of some of the hog farms. And basically what was happening was the hog farmers were operating these waste lagoons um, you know, you'd have a lagoon, and they were supposed to keep a, f a certain amount of freeboard. So you're supposed to have why is it why it should be black rather than blue. So you've got a certain amount of hog manure, and you've got to have this freeboard in case you have rains. Well, what was happening is they were putting more factories in, more and more hogs, and so running these lagoons sort of close to the top. You know, with little freeboard, what happened was uh, a couple of hurricanes came along and breached these lagoons. And so when you had all these floodwaters, this lagoon waste went along with it and made a lot of people very sick. And I think some people lost their lives from it. Um, and based on that, they started um, a whole CAFO program, CAF confined animal feeding operations where they defined uh, confined animal feeding operations as operations of certain sizes. If you had so many livestock or livestock animal units, for instance, if you had say more, I can't remember the exact, if you had more than 30 cows that were confined to a particular area and you had a waste pit that you had to wash into and everything, then you were regulated as a capo. So certainly a hog farm with 8,000 hogs was going to be regulated as a capo. And those capo regulations came on oh, in about the early 2000s. Uh, and, you know, this was in cooperation with the US EPA and the, the ag community, the USDA, those, those kind of people. Um, and and it, was, it was really designed so that we wouldn't have spillovers and people also started realizing that uh, phosphorus was becoming a problem you know, because you apply this manure onto your farm fields, um, uh, the nitrogen was either taken up or lost, but the phosphorus, the phosphorus remained uh, in the soil and ended up in the water bodies and uh, again in sort of many of our water bodies that we find they're phosphorus limiting so you started seeing all these phosphorus blooms. That was a long time coming. But my point over here was the strategy that they were taking was taking what was traditionally non-point source and making it designating it as point source because a CAFO now has a lagoon you know, and you can now start regulating what that farmer was pumping on. So prior to 1995, the farmer could do what the heck he liked. After 2000, you could go and in and enforce that. And I think that's only right and fair. But you can imagine that the agricultural lobby did not like this effect. So essentially that strategy was to take non-point source and designated it as point source. And once you've done that, you can start enforcing uh, plan, uh, you know, what these guys are doing. The other thing was the, um, I think it's, I'm a little bit vague on it, but they were taking cities and counties, MS4, a municipal storm, Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System and really saying let's suppose this is Columbia 
Columbia is de designated, designated as MS4. And what they were saying was, Columbia, last year your streets, you know, you could just take your street, any runoff that came from your street, you know, it went into a, separate, into a storm sewer system and it went off into the river. Now, you might also have a, a, a sewer system that is mixed with your storm system. So when you had a storm, your sewer and your storm both uh, mixed and that all went into the river and you can imagine what that would do. And what they were saying was now your storm system, uh, your, uh, your, your storm system, you're not going to be able to allow it to go directly into any receiving water body. You're going to have to treat that before you let it go. So anything that comes out into the Congaree or the, the Bush River or whatever has to go through some sort of treatment system and often, basically, they're going to be these very large catchment areas where you've got some kind of residence time that will settle out, for instance, some of the junk that comes from the roads, tires, oil, cadmium, this kind of thing, and then also your pathogens, okay? Those will settle out, and then you'll have an overflow that goes into the river. But that strategy, the MS4 system, is you're taking what was traditionally non-point sources like, you know, stuff from the streets and dogs pooping and guys over-fertilizing over their lawns and you say, uh, 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 you can't let that go in there now. As a municipality, your responsibility is to first catch that and then allow it to go into the stream. Again, I think it's a good strategy. It places the burden on a large organization like the municipality to do it. But of course, as they design things in the future, it's going to be more with, with this regulation in mind. Uh, so, uh, I guess that's one of what I would consider the logical or perhaps innovative ways that regulators have been able to address ambient water conditions, but not by managing for ambient water quality directly, but they would were managing ambient water quality through converting this from a non-point source to a point source, where this would actually have an NPDES permit where it would be studied, and they would be, in theory, monitoring that all the time. So I thought I'd just add that sort of thought uh, to, to the other talks that we've had so far. Um, hopefully this helps you. And the last thing I'm going to do is just quickly go through a load duration curve um, and uh, how it's developed. And I'm going to give you that example as well. Um, yeah, I think we'll talk about the load duration curve element. Okay, thanks very much.